The National Museum of the American Indian is part of the Smithsonian Institution and is committed to advancing knowledge and understanding of the native cultures of the Western Hemisphere—past, present, and future—through partnership with native people and others. The museum works to support the continuance of culture, traditional values, and transitions in contemporary native life. It has three facilities, the National Museum of the American Indian on the National Mall in Washington, D.C., which opened on September 21, 2004, on 4th Street and Independence Avenue, Southwest, the George Gustav High Center, a permanent museum in New York City, and the Cultural Resources Center, a research and collections facility in Suitland, Maryland. The foundations for the present collections were first assembled in the former Museum of the American Indian in New York City, which was established in 1916, and which which became part of the Smithsonian in 1990. Topic: History. Following controversy over the discovery by Native American leaders that the Smithsonian Institution held more than 12,000 to 18,000 Indian remains, mostly in storage, United States Senator Daniel Inouye introduced in 1989 the National Museum of the American Indian Act. Passed as Public Law 101-185, it established the National Museum of the American Indian as a living memorial to Native Americans and their traditions. The Act also required that human remains, funerary objects, sacred objects, and objects of cultural patrimony be considered for repatriation to tribal communities, as well as objects acquired illegally. Since 1989 the Smithsonian has repatriated over 5,000 individual remains, about one-third of the total estimated human remains in its collection. On September 21, 2004, for the inauguration of the museum, Senator Inouye addressed an audience of around 20,000 American Indians, Alaska Natives and Native Hawaiians, which was the largest gathering in Washington, D.C. of indigenous people to its time. The creation of the museum brought together the collections of the George Gustav High Center in New York City. City, founded in 1922, and the Smithsonian Institution. The High Collection became part of the Smithsonian in June 1990, and represents approximately 85% of the holdings of the NMAI. The High Collection was formerly displayed in the Audubon Terrace location, but had long been seeking a new building. The Museum of the American Indian considered options of merging with the Museum of Natural History, accepting a large donation from Ross Perot to be housed in a new museum building to be built in Dallas, or moving to the U.S. Customs House. The High Trust included a restriction requiring the collection to be displayed in New York City, and moving the collection to a museum outside of New York aroused substantial opposition from New York politicians. The current arrangement represented a political compromise between those who wished to keep the high collection in New York, and those who wanted it to be part of the new NMAI in Washington, D.C. The NMAI was initially housed in Lower Manhattan at the Alexander Hamilton U.S. Custom House, which was refurbished for this purpose and remains an exhibition site. Its building on the Mall in Washington, D.C. opened in 2005. Locations The Museum of American Indian has three branches, National Museum of the American Indian in the National Mall Washington, D.C., George Gustav High Center in New York City, and the Cultural Resources Center in Maryland. Topic National Mall Washington, D.C. The site on the National Mall opened in September 2004. Fifteen years in the making, it is the first national museum in the country dedicated exclusively to Native Americans. The five-story, 250,000-square-foot curvilinear building is clad in a golden-colored Casota limestone designed to evoke natural rock formations shaped by wind and water over thousands of years. The museum is set in a 4.25 acres square meters site and is surrounded by simulated wetlands. The museum's east-facing entrance, its prism window and its 120-foot high space for contemporary native performances are direct results of extensive consultations with native peoples. Similar to the High Center in Lower Manhattan, the museum offers a range of exhibitions, film and video screenings, school group programs, public programs and living culture presentations throughout the year. The museum's architect and project designer is Canadian Douglas Cardinal Blackfoot. Its design architects are GBQC Architects of Philadelphia and architect John Paul Jones Cherokee, Choctaw. 
Disagreements during construction led to cardinals being removed from the project, but the building retains his original design intent. He provided continued input during the museum's construction. The structural engineering firm chosen for this project was Severed Associates. The museum's project architects are Jones & Jones Architects and Landscape Architects Limited of Seattle and Smith Group of Washington, D.C., in association with Lou Weller Caddo, the Native American Design Collaborative, and Polshik Partnership Architects of New York City, Ramona Sakastua Hopi, and Donna House Navajo, Oneida, also served as design consultants. The landscape architects are Jones & Jones Architects and Landscape Architects Limited of Seattle and EDAW, Inc., of Alexandria, Virginia. In general, Native Americans have filled the leadership roles in the design and operation of the museum and have aimed at creating a different atmosphere and experience from museums of European and Euro-American culture. Donna E. House, the Navajo and Oneida botanist who supervised the landscaping, has said, the landscape flows into the building, and the environment is who we are. We are the trees, we are the rocks, we are the water. And that had to be part of the museum. This theme of organic flow is reflected by the interior of the museum, whose walls are mostly curving surfaces, with almost no sharp corners. The Mitsudam Native Foods Café is divided into native regional sections such as the Northern Woodlands, South America, the Northwest Coast, Mesoamerica, and the Great Plains. The museum has published a Mitisam Café cookbook. The only Native American groups not represented in the cafe are the southeastern tribes such as the Choctaw, Chickasaw, Cherokee and Seminole, many of which supported the United States throughout the tribe's histories. Topic: <laughs> George Gustav High Center, New York City. George Gustav High (1874–1957) traveled throughout North and South America collecting native objects. His collection was assembled over 54 years, beginning in 1903. He started the Museum of the American Indian and his High Foundation in 1916. The High Foundation's Museum of the American Indian opened to the public on Audubon Terrace in New York City in 1922. The museum at Audubon Terrace closed in 1994 and part of the collection is now housed at the museum's George Gustav High Center, that occupies two floors of the Alexander Hamilton U.S. Custom House in Lower Manhattan. The Bose R style building, designed by architect Cass Gilbert, was completed in 1907. It is a designated National Historic Landmark and a New York City landmark. The center's exhibition and public access areas total about 20,000 square feet 2,000 square meters. The High Center offers a range of exhibitions, film and video screenings, school group programs and living culture presentations throughout the year. <laughs> Cultural Resources Center Maryland. In Suitland, Maryland, the National Museum of the American Indian operates the Cultural Resources Center, an enormous, nautilus-shaped building which houses the collection, a library, and the photo archives. The Cultural Resources Center opened in 2003. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Collection. The National Museum of the American Indian is home to the collection of the former Museum of the American Indian, High Foundation. The collection includes more than 800,000 objects, as well as a photographic archive of 125,000 images. It is divided into the following areas, Amazon, Andes, Arctic, Subarctic, California, Great Basin, Contemporary Art, Mesoamerican, Caribbean, Northwest Coast, Patagonia, Plains, Plateau, Woodlands. The collection, which became part of the Smithsonian in June 1990, was assembled by George Gustav High (1874–1957) during a 54-year period, beginning in 1903. He traveled throughout North and South America collecting native objects. High used his collection to found New York's Museum of the American Indian, High Foundation, and directed it until his death in 1957. The High Foundation's Museum of the American Indian opened to the public in New York City in 1922. The collection is not subject to the Native American Graves Protection and Repatriation Act. When the National Museum was created in 1989, a law governing repatriation was drafted specifically for the museum, the National Museum of the American Indian Act, upon which NAGPRA was modeled. 
In addition to repatriation, the museum dialogues with tribal communities regarding the appropriate curation of cultural heritage items. For example, the human remains vault is smudged once a week with tobacco, sage, sweetgrass, and cedar, and sacred crow objects in the plains vault are smudged with sage during the full moon. If the appropriate cultural tradition for curating an object is unknown, the native staff uses their own cultural knowledge and customs to treat materials as respectfully as possible. The museum has programs in which Native American scholars and artists can view and MAI's collections to enhance their own research and artwork. Topic: Nation to Nation Treaties. In 2014 NMAI opened a new exhibition Nation to Nation, Treaties, curated by Indian rights activist Susan Schoen Harjo. The exhibit is built around the Two Row Wampum Treaty, known from both Indian oral tradition and a written document that some believe is a modern forgery. Museum reviewer Diana Muir Applebaum has said that, "...there is no evidence that there ever was a 1613 treaty," and describes NMAI as a museum that peddles fairy tales. Reception The National Museum of the American Indian has been criticized occasionally for a perceived disjointedness of its exhibits. Two Washington Post reviews on the museum were hostile at the representation of the American Indian. Two writers, Fisher and Richard, expressed, "...irritation and frustration at the cognitive dissonance they experienced once inside the museum." Fisher expected the displays that depicted the clash between foreign colonists and the native people. The exhibit lacked a trace of Indians' evolution from centuries of life on this land, and gave little information as to the history of their survival. He concludes, "...the museum feels like a trade show in which each group of Indians gets space to sell its founding myth and favorite anecdotes of survival." Each room is a sales booth of its own, separate, out of context, gathered in a museum that adds to the balkanization of a society that seems ever more ashamed of the unity and purpose that sustained it over two centuries." Richards, who also had a similar assessment of the NMAI, begins his criticism by observing that he found the exhibits to be confusing and unclearly marked. To him, the exhibits were full with a mixture of totem poles and t-shirts, headdresses and masks, toys and woven baskets, projectile points and gym shoes." According to him, the items were presented in a hodgepodge that displayed history in an incoherent demonstration. Edward Rothstein described the NMAI as an "...identity museum," that "...jettisons Western scholarship and tells its own story, leading one tribe to solemnly describe its earliest historical milestone." Birds teach people to call for rain. Similarly, Diana Muir accused the curators of going with verve and confidence to a place where subjective personal narrative is privileged above factual evidence, and the deliberate myth-making of an active national revival trumps scholarship. Attendance <inaudible> 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 Attendance is low, compared to other museums on the mall. Although the museum had 2.4 million visitors the year it opened, it has averaged only 1.4 million in the years since and is said to be best known for its cafeteria. The Washington Post described it in 2015 as remarkably empty of visitors and attributed this to exhibits that feel disjointed and incomplete. Topic: <laughs> Directors Kevin Gover is the director of the Smithsonian Institution's National Museum of the American Indian as of December 2, 2007. He is a former professor of law at the Sandra Day O'Connor College of Law at Arizona State University in Tempe, an affiliate professor in its American Indian Studies program and co-executive director of the university's American Indian Policy Institute. Gover, 52, grew up in Oklahoma and is a member of the Pawnee Nation of Oklahoma and of Comanche descent. He received his bachelor's degree in public and international affairs from Princeton University and his law degree from the University of New Mexico. 
He was awarded an honorary Doctor of Laws degree from Princeton University in 2001. Gover succeeds W. Richard West, Jr., Southern Cheyenne, who was the founding director of the National Museum of the American Indian (1990–2007). West was strongly criticized in 2007 for having spent $250,000 on travel in four years and being away from the museum frequently on overseas travel. This was official travel funded by the Smithsonian, and many within the Native American community offered defenses of West and his tenure. American Indian Magazine The museum publishes a quarterly magazine, called The American Indian, which focuses on a wide range of topics pertaining to Native Americans. It won the Native American Journalists Association's General Excellence Awards in 2002 and 2003. The magazine's mission is to celebrate Native traditions and communities. Topic. See also. District of Columbia Portal. United States Custom House, New York City. National Museum of the American Indian Act Daniel Inouye George Gustav High Center Always Becoming American Indian College Fund Live Earth Concert, Washington, D.C.